In my last video, uh, we dealt with a bent hairspring. And in this video, we're going to deal with a twisted hairspring. And you may notice that this hairspring looks a little bit out of shape. So it's twisted downwards and it's twisted upwards. And here it is mounted on the balance. And as you can see, the coils are touching the balance cock. And of course, this watch would not run. So first of all, I'm going to uh, strip off the balance spring from the balance wheel. And that necessitates removing the balance assembly here. You may notice I'm lifting the balance cock with my bare fingers. Please note that this is just a, a scrap watch movement that I'm using for the purposes of this demonstration. In the real world, you should never really touch uh, watch parts with your fingers. And to remove the hairspring uh, collet from the balance staff, I usually use a pair of hand levers and I slide them under and twist in opposite directions whilst pushing and that tends to do a good job. So here we are with a, a closer look at the hairspring. You can see it's twisted downwards and Got a good indication of where the twist is. Um, it's the at the lowest point where they they tend to where they're meeting. Also, if you look carefully, you'll notice that it uh, around halfway round it it twists upwards as well. So we might have to make two adjustments here. So the technique involves um, using two pairs of tweezers, just as I did in the last video. And I've determined that I need to uh, make an adjustment just where it's starting to twist downwards. And what I need to do is grip firmly the hairspring uh, with one pair of tweezers and with the other pair of tweezers I need to lift and, and bear in mind that the tweezers are absolutely vertical. And I'm twisting the hairspring upwards and I'm doing it very gently. And it didn't really require much effort. But as you can see, we've removed that particular bend. But there's also another one. And that bend was in the opposite direction. As you can see, it's lifting up from this point. So to deal with that, it's exactly the same. Um, but instead of lifting up, I want to be pushing it downwards. And I'll show you that. Actually, if you look carefully, you can actually see a slight kink here. And 
that's a great clue because that's where I'm going to twist downwards. So here we are. It's the same procedure. Just grab it firmly with one pair of tweezers and you want to be pushing forwards this time. Until you judge that the hairspring is in line with, uh, sorry, the, the outer coil is in line with all the inner coils. Let's have a look and I need to do it a little bit more. It's best just to take your time and it's better to make more smaller adjustments than try and do it in one big adjustment. And when you're convinced that they're all lined up, uh, just get your eyeglass, a nice strong eyeglass, and hold it up to the light. And just make sure that it's perfectly flat. Another good indicator is that the stud of the hairspring needs to be exactly at 90 degrees um, to the actual hairspring itself. If that is uh, twisted, then that also needs to be dealt with. So now it's flat, I'll just reassemble that and we'll have a look. I'm just pushing the collar on there with my staking set. So before reassembling, you want to make sure that the index is as far away from the stud as possible by pushing, pushing it across. And there's a good reason for that, um, which I'll show you in a moment. So start off by locating the stud. and screw that in place. You can slightly loosen that and adjust the height of the stud as required uh, once it's assembled into the watch. And now this is why you have to have the index as far across as possible because you want to be lifting the hairspring over And that is easier to do without damaging the spring when the index is as far away from the stud as possible. And now that's lifted over, I can continue the assembly. And let's have a look. And obviously that looks in much better shape than it did before. So I hope you found that helpful. And uh, thanks for watching.